Hi guys, Miss Acton. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good night, depending on whenever you're watching this video. So today is September 21st, 2020. It is a Monday and uh, welcome back. I hope you had a great weekend and you're ready to get started back working. So um, today, um, I got a long I will statement. I'm going to explain it to you after I read it to you. So it says, I will answer questions about addition and subtraction within 20 to get ready for my math test. So tomorrow you guys have a math test and today we're going to be reviewing some of the questions that you might see on that test and some of the questions that you guys have been working on for the past two, maybe even three weeks leading up to this math test. And the math test is all addition and subtraction within 20. And when I say within 20, it means that the answer is always 20 or lower. So we haven't dealt with any numbers like 30, 100, 300. We stuck with numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So um, let's get ready for that math test. So I have a, my cursor is being goofy again. Um, so I have a jam board where I have three questions that um, are probably going to be the ones that are maybe going to cause the most trouble. The ones that um, me, Miss Jess, Miss Ramos saw that you guys had the most trouble with doing your classwork these past few weeks. So I know that there's a lot of kiddos that need help with these. I think I did three, pretty sure. So we're going to go to jam board where I have all three of the questions. All right. So the first one um, has a tens frame, which hopefully from first grade, you guys know a ton about. And put me up at the top because you guys did them all the time. Some of you guys probably had dreams about them, and now you were doing them in your sleep. So there are a few questions on your test that you're going to take tomorrow on Tuesday that ask you to use tens frames to help you answer the question. Um, sometimes they ask you to draw a tens frame. Sometimes they ask you to um, examine a tens frame, to look at a tens frame, and that kind of goes along with this one. Uh, we're going to do both. So you're going to examine it and we're going to be um, using it to help us solve the equation. So it says use the tens frame to find 16 subtract 7 and let's find the answer. So first off, here is our tens frame. Just by looking at it, can you tell me without counting 1, 2, 3, 4, how much that we have in this tens frame? If you said 16, then you are correct. And that's not just because you looked up here and you said, oh, well, we're starting with the number 16 in our equation. So it would make sense to make 16 on our chart. You should also be able to look at it and be able to tell pretty fast. So we already know we've got 10 up here. If a tens frame is completely filled up, it is 10. Let me repeat that. If a tens frame is completely filled up, it is a 10. It's not hard. It's not rocket science. They're not trying to make it too difficult for you. Um, so if you see a tens frame and it is completely filled up with every single box, it's automatically 10. So I don't even need to start one, two, three. I can just say 10. And then I know five is half of 10. So that means no matter what tens frame is filled up, I know if an entire row is filled up, it's five. So I could do 10 plus another five is 15 plus another one is 15, 16. I could also count by fives if I wanted to because I know each row, if it's filled up, has five in it. I could count five, 10, 15, plus one more down at that bottom one, 16. Five, 10, 15, 16. Or I could do 10, 15, 16. So either way, um, hopefully you guys uh, get faster and faster with that because we will be practicing that all year long. So. I do have 16 down here, so I did start with that in my equation. And that wants me to take away 7. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my pen. I'm going to do the marker. I'm going to do black because I feel like it's going to stand out with that blue. And I'm going to subtract 7. Take away 7. Minus 7. However you say it, you know that you have 16 that are in here. you got to take 7 of them and make them gone. you got to say deuces, bye, get out of here. And the easiest way to do that with the tens frame with Miss Acton here showing you would probably be to just put an X through it. So there's subtract one, subtract two, subtract three. And you don't have to start with the beginning ones. You can even go down here to the bottom. So I've got subtract one, two, three, subtract four, subtract five, subtract six. 
subtract 7. So I don't even have to go in order. I can go all crazy. just makes it harder for you to be able to tell what the number is when you're finished. So now I can just count how many I didn't cross out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So my answer should be 9. So I'm going to write 9 in my blank right there. Now, I'm going to show you how you can make this a lot easier, a lot less steps, a lot less craziness. And when you get to your answer, you don't have to say 1, 2, 3, 4. It's really easy for you to notice. So I'm going to undo a whole bunch. Get rid of all these X's. So now I'm going to start with my last dot that I would put on here when I made 16. Because when you put 16 in this tens frame, if you did it, which is what you need to pretend that you did, you would have put a dot here, dot here, dot here, dot here, dot here, and you would have filled up this top one, and then you would have filled up the next row. The last one you would have put is this one right here. So you're going to start off crossing that one out. One. How many am I taking away? Seven. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six and seven. So now I'm looking, I'm like, okay, if I had all of these untouched, not crossed out, I know that my answer would be 10, but I've got one. What is 10 subtract one? What is one less than 10? Nine. Nine is your answer. So that just makes it a lot easier. So if you get in your brain that this tens frame right here that is completely filled up, it is. 10 every single time you will make your life so much easier in finding those answers so if you have one crossed out you're like oh that was a 10 but i'm taking away one from it one less than 10 is nine i know that i've been counting from one to ten and backwards since i was in kindergarten okay and this goes with even if you don't have the number 16 on there if we just had the number 20 if you filled all of these up and you had to take away some pay attention to those tens frames and don't make it harder on yourself by going one two, three, four. That's stuff that we left back in kindergarten and first grade. Let's start thinking smarter so we don't have to do as much work, like shortcuts kind of, okay? All right, so you're gonna see some questions like that on your test tomorrow. So just remember, if it says use a tens frame, use that tens frame to help you. If you're adding to the tens frame, you should be adding circles to it, right? But if you're taking away from your tens frame, then you're going to be using your X and out, like Ms. Acton just showed you, okay? So keep that in that noggin for tomorrow. All right, so moving on to our next question. Question. <laughs> all right, so our next one is um, choose all equations that five will make true when you put five into the blank. You're going to have two of these questions on your assessment tomorrow, on your test tomorrow. Assessment is the big teacher way of saying a test. I don't know why we don't just say test, but we say assessment. Um, so if you hear me say that, that's just a fancy word for test. So your test tomorrow has two questions like this where it says, it's got four questions and it says, okay, pretend that each question has the blank spot has a five in it or an eight in it or a seven in it. Is that question true? And what you're going to do now on the test, it's on the computer, so you can't write on it, but I'm going to tell you that you should probably have a piece of paper there next to you. And I'll have a video going along with your math assessment for tomorrow that you can follow. That Ms. Acton will show you some strategies and some things that you can do to make tests easier for you, okay? So what you're going to do is write the equations on a piece of paper if you have one. Or if you have um, an iPad, you can download a drawing app and you can draw them on there. Um, be creative about what you can do. But it definitely is going to help you. It's going to be really hard to find those answers if you don't write that stuff down. So this one wants me to choose all equations at five will make them true when I put five in each blank. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put five in each one of these blanks. Five. I'm going to pretend like five is the missing number in all of these. And then I'm just going to solve each one of them and figure out if that five makes sense. So this is where a scrap sheet of paper would be really helpful because you need room to um, draw a tens frame or do um, circles, whatever drawing or whatever strategy that you use in number line. To get you your answer, you need a room to be able to do that. So with my 10 subtract 5, I'm going to do a number line with this first one. So let's draw a line. And we got to go up to 15, right? I'm going to erase a little bit of that because I think I need to make it a little bit longer. So let's go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I went a little bit further. And that's okay.
I ain't gotta make it perfect, guys. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just acting as I'm reading this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Oh my gosh, this is so sloppy. But you guys get the point. So this one would be 1, 2, 3, 4. We'll put a 5 right there. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So this is my number line. So first thing it tells me to do is start at 10. So I'm going to go up here to 10. I'm going to choose a different color. Let's do red. So that's where I start. And then it wants me to add 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I ended up on 15. So 10 plus 5 equals 15. Is this equation true with me adding a 5 into the blank? Yes. So I would choose this one. So that one is definitely an answer. I would bubble that one in. All right, let's go to the next one. The next one is 13 subtract 8 equals 5. So I'm going to do a tens frame with this one. 1, 2, 3, 4, okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 in that one. So I need to start with the number 13, and I only have 10 in my tens frame. So I need to create another tens frame. One, two, three, four. Ooh, that top one was really good. This second one is terrible. Don't you dare laugh at Miss Acton. She's trying her hardest. Don't you dare laugh at her. So now I need to make 13. So I'm not going to count these again. I'm just going to say 10, 11, 12, 13. So I've got 13 in my tens frame. What's my sentence tell me to do next? My equation tell me to do next. 13. Subtract 8. So once we take away 8, let me grab a different color so that stands out. So I need to cross out 8 of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I love this one because I used my strategy where I started with the last dot that I drew in my tens frames and I worked my way backwards. Now I have this entire first row up here that has not been touched. The rest of them have been crossed out. So I know that in a tens frame, if it's completely filled up, it's a 10, but I also know it's cut in half and half of 10 is five. So if I've got this first half of this 10 that's still up there, I know that my answer, I don't even have to count them, is automatically five. So is 13 subtract eight equal five? It sure does. So this one is also true. Let me go over and grab that red. So this one is also true. So those two top ones would definitely be ones that I would bubble in as a correct answer in my test. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at this one down here. Five plus nine equals 19. Five plus nine equals 19. Is that what I said? I feel like I said something different. <laughs> so I use a number line. I use a tense frame. Now let's just use a drawing. I mean, we can use dots with those. I'm going to grab green just because I'm feeling green. So let's do five is the first thing it tells me to do. Five. So we got one, two, three, four, five. And then it tells me to add nine. Let's grab a different color. Let's grab yellow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I've got my group of five plus my group of nine. I need to count them and find out what we have all together. One, two, Miss Acton. Start with your bigger number and count up. You're wasting your time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That would take forever. Start with this bottom number, which is nine, and then count the five that you've got. So nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So the answer to this one is actually not even 19. It's actually 14. All oh, that hurts. So is that equation correct with the five put in the blank? No, it's not. So that means that that one is not an answer and we will not count that one right. So scribble that one out. Get, get out of here. You're not right. We don't have time for you. All right. So our last one is five minus three or take away three or subtract three equals seven. So we need to see if that five will make this equation true when we put it into the blank. So now I'm going to use the last strategy, and that is counting with your fingers or with your brain. So um, not doing any sort of drawing, just using what you've got in your hands. And this one is probably the easiest one and the one that you want to try to master the most because when you're out in the real world and you're trying to figure out problems like, you know, counting coins that you got in your pockets, trying to figure out um, something that's going on in your life outside and you don't have a pencil, and a piece of paper there with you, guess what you always have? Your fingers. And guess what you always have? 
your brain. So this one wants me to start with five. So I'm gonna put five fingers up or put five in my brain, five. It wants me to take away, subtract, minus three. So that means I'm gonna be taken away. It means my number in my brain's gonna go down. And that means my fingers are gonna be taken away or go down. So let's start with my hand first. So I've got five, four, three, two. What did it end up with? So I put my three fingers down, one, two, three, and I end up with the answer of two. <gasps> what does it say right there? Five minus three equals seven. That's not looking good. I'm going to do it again with my brain, though, just to be extra sure. So I put five in my brain and put three fingers up. Five, four, three, two. <gasps> I got two as my answer both times. So that means the seven is not true. Right there needs to be a two. I'm trying to make it darker. 5 minus 3 equals 2, so that equation was not right either. So get that bad boy out of there. He is not right. So, again, you have two different problems on your test tomorrow that are going to have um, questions like this where they're going to ask you to put a number, like 5, 7, 6, 8, 3, 2, into the blanks and then decide if that equation is true. And you need to pick a strategy that you're comfortable with that you will get the right answer with. Miss Acton will always tell you, when we're in person in class and we're at home. I don't care what strategy you use. All I care is that you can get me the answer, okay? Your moms and your daddies and your aunties and your aunties and your uncles and your grannies, all those people at home that care about you and want you to get smarter every day, they do not care how you solve these equations as long as you get them right. So looking at the four strategies that Miss Acton just showed you, pick which one that you are the most comfortable with and the one that you know I can get this question right and use that on all four of them, okay? So if the number line is your jam, you get it right every time. It's easy for you to use and you like using it. Use the 10 plus 5 equals 15 with the number line. Then do 13 minus 8 equals 5 with the number line. And then do another number line for the 5 plus 9 equals 19. And then do another number line for the 5 minus 3 equals 7 one. Do it for every single one of them, okay? So pick a strategy that you know is foolproof, you know that will give you the answer every time that you're really good at, and use that one, okay? All right, so the last one slide that I have is a word problem. There's going to be a ton of these on your test, okay? A ton of these. So please pay attention how Miss Acton shows you how you can visualize it. And you guys, just like I said in the last slide, do whatever you got to do to get this answer right. So in this equation, it says Tina has 17 points in a game she is playing. So if you need to draw a scoreboard and put that she's got 15 points on the scoreboard, because that's going to help you figure out in your brain what the answer is to this. Oh, and it's 17. Sorry. Then do it. Do whatever is going to help you get that answer right okay so let's keep going with what miss acton has so far tina has 17 points in a game she's playing she loses eight points so in my brain i'm thinking okay if i'm playing a game and i've got points and someone tells me i lose points is my number going up or is it going down am i losing points or am i gaining points is my number getting smaller or bigger Right. If you lose points, your points are going down, which is not a good thing in a game that you're playing. So that means that our 17 points that we have, we're going to take away eight of them. All right. So let's find the answer to that first. So 17 minus eight. I really, really, really like just the drawing the circles like I did in the last one because um, it's just so much faster for me. And I feel like I see it better and I don't have to worry about drawing a tense frame or drawing a number line. It's just a lot less fluff. So I'm going to draw 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So I'm going to draw 17 circles to represent the 17 points that Tina has at the beginning of the game. Again, I just drew the 17 points that Tina has at the beginning of the game that she's playing. Then the next sentence told us that she loses eight points. And we've already decided that if you're playing a game and it tells you you've lost eight points, your number is going down, which means you have to take away some of what your points are. So that means we're going to be crossing out eight of those points. So let's grab some red to show how this is not good. Our points are going down. How many points are we taking away? Eight. She loses eight points. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so then we count how many that we have left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it looks like when Tina starts playing her game and then she loses her eight points, now she has nine points, a lot less than what she had before. But we're only on this sentence right here. We still have another part of our equation that we need to read. So make sure whenever you guys are taking this test that you don't just read the first uh, sentence and say, oh, I'm done. Okay, move on. Read all of it because they're going to try to be sneaky. The test people that make our test, they want to trick you. They want to see what you don't know. And the only way they can do that is by making these tests tricky and almost silly at sometimes and how they want you to find the answer. So they're going to try to challenge you. So you have got to make sure that you read everything and follow the instructions that they're giving you or else there's a good chance you might get it wrong. And you don't want to get a question wrong on a test, okay? So let's finish this and make sure that we did everything that we need to do before we move on. Then she wins six points. Our story is not over. So Tina's having quite a day. So she gained 17 points in this game she's playing, which this game sounds like. That's a good chunk of points, 17. Then she loses eight of those points. She must have like lost a life or something, or somebody else playing the game must have got her or something. You guys know how games work. But then she wins six more points. Maybe she found a treasure chest or something, or she won a battle. Who knows? But now she wins six more points. So she doesn't have nine anymore. She gained more. Because when you win more points, your numbers go up which is adding. So now we need to take that nine she ended up with after she lost those eight points, and we need to get another equation going. So I'm gonna grab our gray blue again. So we're starting with that nine that we ended up with after she lost her eight points. We start with that, and then it says she, then she wins six points. So we know when we gain more points, when we win more points, that means our numbers are going up, which means we are adding. So I'm gonna add six more points, then the last sentence says, how many points does Tina have now? So that looks like this is going to be our last step, you guys. This is a two-step word problem. Why is it a two-step word problem? Because you had to do the first step that it told you to do, and then you had to do a second step. And if you don't do that second step, you won't get the answer right. So now we've got nine plus six. So I'm going to do another drawing. I'm going to grab my yellow again. I'm going to draw nine. One, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then I'm going to add six. I want to show my six with a different color. Let's grab green. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then just to keep myself nice and organized so I don't accidentally grab one of these over here, I'm going to um, draw a line to separate my first step and my second step. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now I'm going to count down here what my questions are. I'm Somebody's blowing up my phone right now. I'm so sorry, but I'm focused on you guys because you guys are important to me right now. So right here we have our number now. Remember, Miss Acton, we got to think smart. So we're going to start with that larger number and count up so we don't do those extra steps. So our, the larger number is the nine. So the group of nine was our yellow. So let's say nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So now... Our friend Tina, after losing those points and breaking, oh, such a broken heart, losing all those points, and she gains them back, and she's almost back to her original 17 points. Tina, keep playing that game, girl. Keep doing you. Keep working hard, and I bet you'll be back up to that 17 points and maybe even make it up to 20 points. You got this, girl. So how many points does Tina have now? She has 15 points. We got it right down there. We're going to circle it. She has 15 points now. I did a two-step word problem, and I am awesome. I think there's one of those on your test tomorrow, but it's probably the hardest problem in the entire test because it's just a lot of work because you have to do those two steps. You have to read it, um, but the good news is the assessment that you guys, the test that you guys are taking, um, the, the whole test has little microphones or little speaker boxes that you push on, and it'll read the questions to you, so you don't need all your family's help at home or Miss Acton's help at home, okay? Well, that is all that Miss Acton has to show to you today. So you're going to go into your classwork and going to get into your math for today, and you're going to answer some questions that look a lot like the ones Miss Acton showed you, but there's also some that most of you guys know how to do already. Just answer those questions, take it seriously, grab you a scrap sheet of paper and a pencil. That way you have something that you can draw your pictures, your tense frames, or your number lines that you need to, the way you can get the answers um, 
as close to good as possible. Get them there, whatever strategy that you need to use. And take it seriously, guys, because the more that you focus and practice on the strategies that you use on this practice today for your review, for your test tomorrow, the easier tomorrow will be when you actually have the test to take. And we know how stressful and crazy tests can make us. Okay, so take today seriously, all right? If you need anything, please contact your teachers. Um, and I hope that you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. Um, and good luck getting the rest of your work done. All right, see you guys. Bye.